and one of my favorite dishes that I've ever made. Wow, that is, mm -hmm. that is unique. Mm. I'm Doug with America's Best Restaurants, and we're traveling the country coast to coast to find restaurants that you should dine at on a frequent basis. We're in Lansing, Michigan at Casking Company. This is a place you need to check out when you are in this area. We're gonna to talk to Kurt, the director of operations. Check out their vast menu from sushi to steak to burgers. It's an infusion of all kinds of things that you are gonna find extremely fascinating and delicious. Plus, we're gonna throw a few drinks into the mix. So why don't you come with me? Let's go inside and check out Cask and Company. Hey, we're back. We're inside. We're with Kurt, Director of Operations, Cask and Company, Lansing, Michigan. Look forward to diving into this unique menu. Oh, right I now. can't wait. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming up to our uh, establishment today here in beautiful Lansing, Michigan. Absolutely. Love it. So the menu I want to get into in the backstory because this truly is unique. But let's start first and foremost with that monster sitting right in front of you. Oh, yeah. Wow. This, this is uh, our, our uh, little Spartan burger right here, right next door to East Lansing, Michigan, home of the Michigan State Spartans. So. You know, we figured that uh, if you're coming in as a, as a college student, you got to have a nice, big, juicy burger. And so we came up with this thing. You know, we got um, some pepper jack cheese on there, homemade pastrami, uh, bacon, a little fried egg, and then, of course, that homemade fried onion ring. So when it comes to the culinary creation, when you start putting stuff like this together with your background, where, where do you pull the ideas from to, Gosh, to create 20, something like that? You know, we've been doing this here, I think ownership and myself, we have about 50 years experience in the restaurant world. And so we've done lots of different restaurants around the country, things with uh, Portuguese food, uh, Spanish food, Italian food. And uh, they've had this location here for about 14 years. Um, before us, it was a Chinese place. But so we have a little Asian fusion mix going on. And we just took the kind of the best, the best of the best from all the menus that we've worked on um, throughout the last, you know, 20 years, 25 years, and put it all in, in one showcase right here at Casking Company. And then your background, you spent time not just at Lansing, you've been in Colorado, mm -hmm. you've done a lot of culinary, so you pull yeah. from a lot of that experience and some of the yeah. creativity? Yeah, that was the idea when I was growing up. I wanted to dive into as many different food cultures as I could. and. Um, you know, like I said, uh, every couple of years I'd bounce to a different cuisine, and so this was kind of my last stopping point here with the, the Chinese and then the sushi, of course. Uh, those were kind of the last the last part of the world that I really wanted to explore. Nice. Well, I tell you what, why don't we cheers? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, Enjoy the old we'll fashioned. We'll get into these. We've got the old yeah. fashioned. We've got a beer. So, mm -hmm. you know, hey. Cheers. It's morning. This is breakfast. Mm. Ooh. Tasty? Yeah, I like that. A nice smoked glass with that as well. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I like that. Well, we're going to have more intermissions as we go. Uh, why don't we go, let's let's start talking about the sushi. So, oh, yeah. what are we looking at, number one? Oh, so the Hawaiian volcano roll, that one that we, we light on fire at the table side, so it starts to warm things up. Um, making, you know, all of our fish comes in whole fish, we fillet it out. Um, just put a lot of passion into the, the food that we're making. Um, but it does take a lot of work. It's a labor of love. And, um, you know, just we have great people in the back of the house, great people in the front of the house. And that allows us to take care of the people that are walking in our doors. So. Okay, and mm -hmm. then all the Great go, Wall. Then. That's one of my favorite ones. You have uh, nice fresh salmon, uh, fresh tuna, and of course the avocado going in there. Um, sushi rice. You can get it either with um, soy paper or wrapped in cucumber rolls uh, as an as an option too. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. So the the sushi creations uh, is that you? Is that uh, the no? Owner? That's our um, sushi sushi Scott is what we call him. He's our head sushi guy. He's been rolling sushi at this location for about 11 years now. Wow! It'll be 11 years this August. So um, we're lucky to have him, and he gets to train all the uh, other sushi chefs right right underneath him and help educate our guys, which help keep keeps them around too. So okay, oddball question here. Sure. I have some that just pop into my head. You get a lot of pairings when you have drinks and foods and steaks or whatever. Mm -hmm. Are there beverage pairings? When you know, it comes we, to we have a we have a nice little sake selection, but really any type of, 
white wine goes great with sushi. The other thing is I've never put limits on what people want to drink. If you want to have a red wine and you want to eat a white fish, if that's what you're feeling that day, just go ahead. You have about a thousand meals every year that you eat, so it's just one out of those a thousand. Mm -hmm. Might as well have fun with it. And who knows, maybe you create the next big trend or you maybe you find something that you can introduce to your friends and family, uh, something that they've never tried before. When it comes to the menu and building things out, have you ever had it where customers, they make a suggestion and you kind of go, hmm, maybe we'll try that? Have you ever done that? Yeah, anything? you know, that's a great question. Sometimes customers, um, but there's a reason they're not in the restaurant business either. So <laughs> good um, one. Yes, very sometimes true. they do have really good suggestions. Uh, other times uh, I've, I, I just kind of chuckle and I say, well, if you want to open a restaurant and do that, <laughs> be my guest, that's, that's no problem. So, Everyone's an expert, right? Yep. I mean, even in college, we did things like we put uh, Guinness on Lucky Charms on St. Patrick's Day, uh, <laughs> you know, for the for the college kids. So you never know what you're you never know what you're gonna get. You're gonna we always try something new. Guinness on Lucky Charms. Guinness on Lucky Charms on St. Patrick's Day. That's a first, man. <laughs> Did you try it? Oh yeah, yeah. They're popular. Line out the door for it. Was it good? Oh yeah, absolutely really? delicious. Yep, yep. There you go. We yep. have to try that. One. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Colton, so I have to profess one thing. I am not the best with chopsticks. Oh. So don't make fun of me, but we're going to dive practice in because makes, we have to eat, Practice right? makes perfect. If you're more comfortable using a fork, that's completely fine, too. You know what? I'm going to no try. No big deal. I'm not, I'm not the best, but I think I got it. There you go. Okay, let's, let's cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Now, Pretty tasty. I do have a sushi story. Oh. First time I ever had sushi. No one told me about the wasabi. <laughs> and I put too much on. Mm-hmm. And eyes it was probably, an inside joke. Eyes probably start watering a little bit. Sinuses get cleared out. Everything was running. So mm -hmm. well, is, is, is that just an, an indoctrination joke that everybody does that they don't tell them about the wasabi? I mean, it. I've done it to people. Um, wasabi has different strengths too. I mean, wasabi is mm -hmm. just like a fr fresh horseradish is essentially what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and then they put a little green coloring in it. But yeah, some can be really, really strong and I dig that stuff. I like to clear my palate out, having a little sushi before I dive into a steak or into mm -hmm. a nice burger like that, so. That's solid. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. And sushi, you know, sushi doesn't have, isn't always raw fish. Mm -hmm. It's just anything that's rolled in rice. Uh, the sashimi is where um, the raw fish comes into, and then nigiri would be that uh, raw fish right over uh, the, the fermented rice wine. That's one of the biggest misconceptions about sushi, and everyone's like, I can't eat that because it's yeah. raw fish. Yeah, we've had a lot of people come here, oh, I can't do that, it's raw fish. Like, no, it's not. There's some that are cooked. You know, we have um, tempura shrimp that goes in some of our rolls, and uh, it doesn't have to be raw, and so it's just wrapped in rice, and you can enjoy it, learn how to use your chopsticks. Rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I have it documented. I used the chopstick <laughs> and I picked it up and I didn't make a fool out of myself. So awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, here we go. Next oh, the item. butcher steak. Yes. Yeah. So we just caramelize, uh, caramelize some onions in bourbon oh, and we yeah. toss that with, with a little balsamic wine, some mushrooms, a little garlic. And then we actually sous vide this steak uh, for about three and a half hours at 130 degrees. And um, it's the, the cut of meat that the butcher used to take home mm. uh, to his family. So everything. Um, he'd sell in the store and this was the cut that he used to keep for his family and um, I love it. It has a lot of flavor. I love the texture of it. It's a little bit different, a little more unique than like a New York strip or a beef tenderloin or something yeah. along those lines. So no, that's how's solid. it tasting today? Oh, excellent. Pretty great? Yeah, go for I'm it. I'm going to try one of these uh, right yeah, here in the maybe. center, I think. Go right. for it. Two dudes eating and having a drink, man. That's there we the go. beauty of this. I'm going to eat a mushroom too. So, mm. excellent menu. I can't, I would be remiss if I didn't mention all the TVs. So oh, yeah. it's not a sports bar per se, but if someone wants to come in and catch the game, yeah, you've got so, that vibe. We do, we have a, you know, you can come in and, and you can enjoy your dinner. You can still have great conversation, but you can also keep an eye on the score, you know? So if you're not real, don't want to pay too much attention to the game, but want to enjoy the company you're with, enjoy the food, but still catch the, the, the score, mm -hmm. you're good to go. Good and then go. the other side of it, it's like two and one. You got the pub right next door. Tell us about oh, that. Oh, yeah. So uh, Front 43 Neighborhood Pub, um, that opened in 2014. Uh, we share the same menu, but it's a little different atmosphere. 
Sometimes it gets a little wild and crazy over there on game days for uh, basketball, football at Michigan State. Um, and we just have a, a great regular crowd that comes in over there. Kind of like the cheers of the area. Everybody knows your name. A lot of people have uh, connected, you know, with business relationships and stuff like that over there. We've even had a, we had a wedding over over there. Um, this was about three weeks ago. Really? A couple, they met there and they wanted to get married over there. And so we said, hey, absolutely, we'll, we'll, we'll make it work for you. I love the concept because, as you say, it's chef-driven cuisine. Mm -hmm. That I would imagine you get people coming in and when they're looking at the menu and as everything comes out, they must be taken aback a little bit because you come in and you think, okay, there's the burgers, but yeah. sushi steak, I mean, you guys really serve it all up. Yeah, trying to execute over all that range of different cuisines and styles. Um, it is challenging, but that's what I've done for the last 20, 25 years in this industry is, you know, I've always immersed myself in like Italian specific. And so this is just a great way to showcase everything that I've learned over the years and also everything that, um, you know, the, the ownership knows as well with the sushi and all the Chinese and the yeah. Asian cuisine. So it's a really balanced menu. Um, there is something for everybody on there. If you can't find anything on our menu, you, you're probably not hungry that day. <laughs> So. <laughs> Good point. Let's come over here. Ah, what's what are we looking at? Oh, so well, the Parmesan fries. I think we got voted one of the the best fries, your top five fries in Lansing. Oh, I couldn't um, see why. Yeah, we put a little Parmesan, some garlic, uh, fresh cracked pepper, and some salt on those. Triple mm -hmm. fried, so we blanch them, then we um, cook them up to order, and then we throw them in a real hot oil at the end to get them try and get them nice and crisp. Uh, but those Mediterranean tacos, probably one of my favorite things on the menu right now. It's a buttermilk non dough and then just a little bit of cheese, then a nice little yellow curry, um, little chicken mixture in there, wow. and some cilantro that goes on top. So super, um, super different. I've been making that recipe for probably 17 years, uh, all over from Houston to Denver, uh, and now back in Michigan. One of my favorite dishes that I've ever made. Wow, that is, mm -hmm. that is unique. Mm. Put some edamame peas in there too for a little bit of crunch. And Life's That's pretty cool. good, yeah. Now you had mentioned with the fries, you know, hand cut and everything. Oh yeah. Scratch. Yeah, so ten, from the ten sauces, cases of potatoes a day. To ten? Yep. Hang on. Yep. Y'all doing some weightlifting back there. Yeah. Yeah, storage is definitely a problem some days. So from the sauces to all of this, scratch. Mm -hmm. Scratch. You guys yep. make this so this you guys are yep. back there creation, it's like a cutting like a fish, cutting cutting up steaks, you know, we hand cut steaks. Um, it's a lot mm. of work, but the flavor speaks for itself. Mm. The flavor speaks for itself. I know. I think mm. that, that deserves another cheer. All right. There we go. Mm. All right. The last item sitting in front of us. Oh, yeah. The bruschetta. That's Just a good. nice classic thing. It's great for sharing, especially with patio season coming up. Uh, we have a nice open air patio, probably about 45, 50 seats out there, a couple fire tables. Um, but this one is a nice uh, burrata ball. So it's got a nice gooey center into it. When you cut into it, it kind of oozes out. And then it's just deconstructed. You can rip your basil up if you would like a little more basil or don't want any, and then put your tomatoes right on that crostini bread, spread the, uh, spread the cheese on top. It's just really light and refreshing. It's a great dish to share with people too. It kind of invokes a little conversation, kind of gets the evening started out. Okay, and then one more off the wall question here. Sure. We're in Lansing. Oh, so yes. the weather change is crazy. You've got Wait the crazy minutes. winters, you've got the summer. Mm -hmm. From the menu side of things, is there anything that's seasonality? Or there have, yeah, we're getting ready. Yeah, we're getting ready to put some new menu items out there for the uh, summertime. A little more lighter food. We try to go a little heavier in the wintertime, a little lighter in the summertime, uh, especially with it being so hot out. Sometimes people aren't as hungry uh, and trying to stay in shape, which is uh, after COVID is always a fun, a fun task. <laughs> I think we all got the COVID-19 pounds, right? 19, yeah. 20, 21. <laughs> yeah. or, or a little bit more. Um, and so, yeah, we really try to, especially in the summertime, make things that are a little bit easier to share so that while you're sitting outside enjoying a glass of wine or a nice old fashioned, um, you know, you can, you can share it and take your time and enjoy the food, enjoy the weather, enjoy the company that you're with. Love it. Check mm -hmm. it out. Hey, I tell you what, they've got a full listing right here on AmericasBestRestaurants.com. Check out their website, check out social media. Real simple. Also, hit the subscribe button below, hit the bell notification. You get notifications when episodes like this drop. And also, just follow them. Follow them on social media. Check out their website. And if you are in the Lansing area, you live here, this is a place you need to be at on a frequent basis. That's the essence of why we do this. If you're traveling into Lansing, hey, you follow the Big Ten. 
and you're coming into East Lansing and you maybe you're a fan of someone other than the Spartans. Uh, yeah, we, we don't judge, but we, no. we are predominantly a green and white bar. So Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Make your way here. Put this on your must visit list. Anything else that we didn't cover, Kurt? No, I just appreciate you guys coming up here on this cloudy day and thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping in. Sounds good. One more cheers. Cheers. All right. Cheers to us. Cheers to you. Thanks. Come check this place out. We're out.